Welcome back to Yen Ben and Murrumbidja. Today we're going to look at the bulrush plant or the kabungi plant and also the common reed plant. And they're located in the river system which you'll see in a second. So I'm just going to select one of these out of the, out of the creek and we'll talk a bit about the properties and the purposes of it for my Aboriginal culture. And it's an important fact to know that this plant actually filtrates the creek system. So what it does is draw all the negative stuff out of the um, water and purifies it so the stream continues to be healthy. So make sure you give it a bit of a shake, get rid of all the dirt. So what I'm going to do is just strip, peel it back like a spring onion because that's pretty much what it looks like. Going to get rid of the bottom. You don't have to use the hatchet or anything like that, you can just use your hands. I'm just being lazy. Right, so you can see it comes out in strips. I'll show you why I'm stripping it in a minute. So this white fleshy part here, apart from getting it dirty, you don't want to do that. But this actually tastes like a snow pea or bean and uh, it's quite starchy and it's, it's really nice to eat. So traditionally my people would use this as a staple food we would also put this over the fire at night to let it steam and overnight and in the morning my people would wake up and chew on it and it would be nice and sweet inside and it would get rid of all the all the spongy part to that plant and I'll zoom in on that spongy part in a minute now that spongy part is something that we don't need at all. What we'll do is actually make some string out of this. And I just use my fingernail to slice it in half. So this is actually the inner part of the plant. So this is the plant itself, the leaf. And inside is the spongy part. And what we need to do is remove the spongy part out of this plant to then make the string. So we've got the spongy part we need to get rid of in this plant. How I do that is I use a modern tool today. And I'll just use the hatchet. And so what I'm doing is pulling this and I'm using the hatchet to turn. And I'm just gonna slowly pull it. So make sure you always use the hatchet to turn your, the blade, I guess. Get a fine cut. And you end up with that spongy part there, we, which we don't need. Then you've got a few more parts to it, so I'm gonna do it one more time. Quite easy when you get the hang of it done. Then you end up with a nice strip. So I always tear off that part because it's a bit weak and you get a nice nice bit of fibre. I use my nail to just split it. Then you just strip it in half. Pretty much you want to strip it into the desired uh, width okay in order to make a string so i'm going to show you how to quickly do the cordage technique and so here you see a piece of um or length of string that i've already done the top end is pretty crummy but whatever so you're going to hold it like that this hand hold the top part you're going to let one droop down you're going to put your little fingers these fingers here and hold that part 
We're going to twist away from us, so we're going to twist towards this ground, okay? And we're going to fold it over towards the camera. Now, my fingers never really seem to work, so twist, ground, fold, over, pull down tight. Pinch it. Twist towards the ground, fold over, hold tight. Twist towards the ground, fold over towards the camera. Pull tight, so it's down like an L shape, or upside down L. Twist towards the ground, fold down, pinch. All right, so we're going to do this for a little bit. When you get so good at it, like me, super deadly, you're going to do it like this, which isn't very fast at all, but it'll do. And you probably all show offs and can show me how to roll it on your leg and twist the string within a two second time frame. It's not going to happen here. All right, so you want to kind of twist it tight enough where it sort of bends over itself, fold down. All right, so it's summer here, guys, and it's raining. Every time I seem to get out and want to record to make these videos, it seems to rain, but I'm just going to push through it because we're looking down at the ground. The camera's not going to get dirty or anything like that, so which is good. So just quickly, this is again the bulrush, same plant, same everything, it's actually got the, the stronger stem in the middle, okay, now this thing here, now I'm no scientist or biologist or whatever, all I know, this here can be used as a fire starter, so you're gonna create your fire, and then you're gonna tip the hot embers into this particular, um, I don't know what you would call it, spongy, it's a bit wet, but that catches the light really quickly. And I know that our people use that to make the flame stronger from the hot embers. So we're getting close to the end of this um, fibre and this part here is actually becoming too thin for my liking. So all I'm going to do is cut some more fibre from this uh, leaf or branch or segment, whatever you want to call it. Long strips. I might give that a bit of a cut. Now again, it's raining. What we're going to do is use our fingernail just to separate it, split it. Done. This part here probably can be cut off, broken off. That part there is can be cut off. So how do we join another piece of fibre to the plant? So all I do, I have to plant, I have the string, and I have the plant, and I just add it like that. Okay? And fingers gotta work. We twist it together. Twist the plant fibres together and then twist, same technique. Sorry if I'm going too fast. And that's how you join another piece of fibre. So there you go, there's some string right there. It's not as strong as the string we made with the stringy bark tree. It's actually um, 
you know, average strength, I guess. Um, what we use this for as well is to make reed necklaces and stuff like that. I've seen Aboriginal men wear um, in old photos and images. And I'll show you the other plant right next to the bulrush that we'll use to make the, the reed necklace. So what I'm going to do here is just cut, cut a few down and um, I'll show you what we use it for. So here's the reeds. Now, from what I know, my ancestors would have used these as spears because they float in the water. So they would have used these as spears because they float in the water. But we also made necklaces out of them. We've also seen um, watercraft or reed canoes being made from them as well. Now, in order for this to work, I probably need scissors. Now, I'm just going to give it a go. Alright, so clean cut. So, I'll give you a zoom in of that. Okay, so here you can see it's hollow inside. And it's kind of like when you're at kindergarten, what you're going to do, you create the macaroni or noodle string necklaces well that's pretty much what the string necklaces look like it's kind of like cuttings off of this in segments and you put the string that you've just created with the bulrush through that particular hole this plant here produces lots of these seeds and these seeds were good for making um, traditional breads, flat breads. As you can see, they produce quite a lot of it as well. Quite a useful and handy plant. Alright guys, so here's a close-up of the actual seed. So these are the seed pods. And what you can see here is the black seed inside. And my people would you collect these and they would put it on their, their grinding dish and grind it down to make a, a flour. Now add some water, roll it into a flat, I guess, pancakey type of thing and then cook it over the hot coals. And that would create, you know, our, our breads. All right, guys, we had, I had to come home because my battery died and it's getting really dark out there and it's just too rainy. So what we're going to do is use the old traditional scissors and we we'll get rid of that bit there. Gee, they make them for real men, don't they? Look how tiny that is. Uh, we're just going to cut it into... Yep, it's all going according to plan. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right. So here's my amazing collection of scissors. <laughs> oh, I've got no adult size scissors. Whatever. Yep. All 
All right guys, so here's the pile of reeds that we just cut. Keep them to a similar size. Doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. And let's get on to continuing on with the string. All right guys, as you can see, I'm continuing on with the string. I'm just gonna finish uh, cording this all together. Um, we're gonna make it a little bit more longer and then we'll complete the rest of the um, necklace. All right guys, so this is a, a fish fishnet trap that I made as a really poorly done draft of what you can actually do with the, um, the bulrush plant. And as you can see, these parts here are done with these reeds and I just intertwined it all. There's some string that I made that's lasted a long time. This is probably a year and a half old. These here, are the inner part to the actual bulrush. I think they call it the cat tail. And the and I showed you that earlier, it's a long shaft with the foamy, soft, spongy thing attached to it, which you would use to make as a fire starter or lighter. So you I cut that and split it into four parts and just branched it off into making a pretty basic fish trap. Yeah, we'll cover those in another another session though. But just that's just one example of what can actually be done with this um, particular plant, and it's pretty flexible, guys. All right, guys. So here we have the string. It's um quite long. As you can tell there's some little bits of pieces that have come off. Well, not come off, but just protruding out of the string. So what we're going to do is just now grab the little turning it on. So we're just getting rid of the excess um, parts that you can see. So what we did was just singe the, the excess off the string. All right guys, so here you have it, is the end product. It's uh, quite long. It's 
probably about a meter long and if I was to wear that I'd fold it over in the four parts and tie it around my neck so these were used traditionally by my people and uh, they were used as a form of gift so when you'd meet with friends that you haven't seen for a long period of time these would be taken from your neck and given to your friend or all their child or children um, you can also google images of Australian Aboriginal reed necklaces and I'll bring up um, original examples or traditional examples of my ancestors uh, ornaments I, I know that men wear this and there has been stories from my people that wear, women also wore these as well so um, pretty pretty simple but really nice type of jewellery and you can make it really quickly and easily if you like what you see today please hit the like or subscribe button and please don't forget to leave a comment thank you